Hey friends, welcome to Power to the Flower. I'm Kara and I'm taking a walk through Davis, Davis, California, where my husband grew up, nearby where I grew up. This is the town where we went to college at University of California, Davis. It holds a lot of great memories for us and it's a wonderful town that we have loved our whole lives and we always thought we'd move back to, but I think those that ship has sailed. So anyways, I'm taking a walk with my dog and I thought it would be fun to just show you what I'm seeing as I walk through the neighborhoods because this is what I'm always doing. I'm always looking at everybody else's houses and plants to see if these are plants that I'd like to try in my yard. And seasonally, you know, if you're keeping an eye on certain plants, then you can see how they do in the different seasons, as well as, um, you know, if they run amok or if they stay under control or if they flower well in different situations. So anyways, how people use them in different structures, that's what I'm thinking about. So I just thought I would throw out some ideas as I'm walking around. And the first place that I'm stopping by is this place right here behind me and I am loving these little red pots. Here's little Kinsey. Kinsey, hi. Okay, I wanna point out the little red pots here. They're simple, they're inexpensive. I think they're even plastic, but they do a nice job of lining the entryway to this house. And I think this is a good example of simple but pretty. So you can see behind me this awesome one. Let me turn the camera around. This home really stands out because of the hardscape that they've done with the wall, with the fence, with the pergolas. They've also flanked those front stairs there and there with two a very beautiful urns. I think that this double layer approach is just very beautiful and the roses particularly stand out. Upon closer inspection, we can appreciate that these people landscaped with both drought tolerant plants as well as low water requirement plants, which is so awesome. And the takeaway for me is which plants would I want to use in my yard? So let's look at them. This is a creeping rosemary. Then we have a ground cover geranium like Roseanne. This is a fleabane daisy or a Santa Barbara daisy and some lavender. In terms of which plants I would wanna use in my yard, I don't really love the creeping rosemary. It is very cool, it creeps, it has beautiful purple flowers, but the problems with it is that it often becomes messy looking in my opinion. Also, it blooms on old wood, so therefore you have to be very forward thinking and know how to prune it the year before because if you prune it at this point it won't bring out the purple spring flowers that it's due for so i'm not really a big fan there i do really love the santa barbara daisy down here this is a great drought tolerant plant that really comes into its own in the winter and spring and it's just about to go into real bloom and it could be the entire ground cover in my opinion in this location. The Roseanne geranium is also very beautiful when it's in bloom and you could back plant it perhaps with something like an ornamental grass that grows under the roses and above the geranium. Here's an example. So as I walk away, I'm thinking, I love those roses. I love that geranium. I love that Santa Barbara daisy. I probably would take caution with the lavender and the creeping rosemary. Lavender grows really well in our area. It just looks a bit messy and not so pretty to me when it's not in bloom. Okay, and here I found another one. Look at this gorgeous home behind me. This is another really beautiful drought tolerant low water option. Do you see those little humps of bush? Those are little ollie olive tree plants. You can do either. They grow, I think, to about four to six feet high, but you can keep them small if you want. They're beautiful, they're evergreen, they're fruitless. They're just very pretty. And these people, it looks like they're gonna use them as a hedge. Let me show you. Little Ollie is a great shrub or patio tree to have. It's beautiful color. It loves clay soil. It doesn't need to be watered very much. Just generally a great plant. Okay, and now check out this adorable little situation here. This is simple, but definitely dramatic. I like this because of its easy care value. We have a low growing boxwood hedge, flanked in the front by Mexican Heather. The contrast between the yellow and green is striking. And you can just imagine that this is probably the easiest little area to take care of in your yard. Oh look, another variety of lavender. 
Again, it just looks a little bit crazy and I want to tame it. If you want to check out a great pruning tutorial, check out the notes below and I will link you one that I have found super helpful from Laura at Garden Answer. Okay, and this is my last stop in Davis. This is actually my in-laws backyard and I love it so much, me and my husband both. And we unconsciously make a lot of decisions in our own yard based on their yard. They live in downtown Davis in a neighborhood, but you would never know because they've planted all these trees at the edge of their yard. And it is just like a little hideaway in the middle of downtown Davis. And we love coming here. It's so serene and beautiful. And it's really just trees, except for a couple hedges, uh, sorry, a couple hydrangeas. And they also on the edge of their lawn plant pansies in the winter and impatiens in the spring that take them all the way into the fall. So this is just a lovely idea that's simple easy to care for, um, but really impactful. Let me show you. The first tree that I really admire is this one right here, this crepe myrtle. I love its structure. It has year round interest, beautiful flowers from summer through fall. The wintertime bark kind of flakes away. It's just beautiful and it loves our area. Here we have two more crepe myrtles. And then this is a trident maple and next to it is a pyracanthus. The cool thing about this plant is that it has all of those red berries and that can be really fun for Christmas. This is a lemon tree over here. And then if we sing, swing around, here is a tangelo tree, which is kind of cool to have all of this fruit in your yard. Back in this corner, they have a variety of other trees, one, two, three, that are hiding this electric pole up there in the air. I'm not sure what they are, but just generally you get the idea. Trees line the entire backyard. They have ivy in the back as well as some ferns, and then there's a hydrangea and another rose. And if we swing over here, we have a row of roses with a few low-growing shrubs on the left. Just generally... It's great. And that's enough for today. I hope that was helpful in terms of thinking about what's in your neighborhood and what grows well and looks good. And goodbye from all of us, including the crazies in the pool. See you next time on Power to the Flower.